What's up friends, Durosai here. Hope you guys are staying creative. In this video, I'll be showing you how I make minimal like textures, ambient, and sort of ear candy sounds that contribute a lot to minimal house and techno, but it doesn't really get talked about that often. And it's also one of those things that isn't super straightforward to make because there's so many different ways of making these kinds of sounds and most of them don't involve traditional synthesis methods. You know, I'm still learning new methods of how to make these sounds. So leave a comment below of how you make these kind of textury sounds because I'd like to learn from you guys. But anyways, before I get into this video, you know the deal. Give a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out some of my music, follow me on Instagram, and yeah, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you is this plugin called Granulator 2. It's a free Max for Life plugin that you can get on Ableton's website, so definitely go do that. It's essentially a granular synthesizer. Granular synthesis is a great way to make these sort of crazy textural effects and stuff like that. And what it's doing is that it's taking a sample and chopping it up and playing it back at different speeds, different pitches. Um, it's, it's, it has all these sort of modulation parameters, but uh, it's easier just to show you. So let me do that. So I'm taking this vocal sample. Mutant brain. It's just saying. Mutant brain. Mutant brain. And with some granular synthesis and grain delay, it becomes this. All right, so I'll break that down. So what I've done here is that I've brought this sample into a fresh granulator patch, and I'll explain some of these parameters. So you have a grain size. So this dictates how big the region that's looped, because if you can hear, it's just looping this region. So as you increase that grain size, it's just making that region really small and you're start, gonna start getting these tonal values. So then you have a file position, which is where in the sample that it's gonna start. So this is where, what I was doing in that other, uh, in, in this right here, I was just modulating or automating the file position. So it's kind of scanning through the sample, but it's also looping. So it sounds, you know, it's got that stuttered effect you have this thing called spray. So what spray does is that it's changing, it's essentially randomizing where uh, the sample plays back, like the start position. So from here, the start position is always gonna be at the leftmost part of this region. Now with spray, for example, if I have spray at say 208 or 209 milliseconds, the start position is going to move randomly plus or minus 209 milliseconds from this position. So you see now it's playing, starting over here, starting over here, it's kind of all over the place. So that just gives it another level of randomization. So you can change it. So now you get a little bit more interesting sounds when you're scanning through the sample. And in addition to that, you have this uh, other section here where you have a amp envelope, a filter envelope, and you have FM as well as two separate filters that you can uh, drive this through. So, you know, with the amp envelope, of course, it's just working as a, a normal ADSR. So, so you can have it slowly fade in. And, you know, that, that stuff is pretty self-explanatory. And then you got FM. So, you know, obviously at these higher pitches, it's just gonna sound more like traditional FM synthesis, like all metallic-y. But you can get it really, uh, when you make the LFO really uh, slow, that's when you can get something a little bit useful. Just add a little bit of variation. So then you also have amplitude modulation as well. That's what AM is. 
So as you can see here, the level of the sample is kind of jumping up and down. So you can also have an LFO doing some stuff here. And what I'm doing here is combining it with a grain delay. So, you know, you have a granular synthesizer with some uh, a granular delay. So let's put that on there. So what I like with the grain delay is that when you turn up the spray, you get a really nice stereo effect. So I really like doing this on vocals, it just makes it sound super spacey. And you can even turn up the, the pitch, which may sound bad, let's see. So what this is doing is that for every uh, repetition of the delay, that repetition increased in pitch by one semitone. So if I turn it up an octave, it sounds very drastic. You know, and that just sounds like Alvin and the Chipmunks. I find this usually works best when it's kind of subtle. Sometimes not even a semitone, just like kind of 0.3. So see, now it's kind of slowly ramping up. So one cool thing to do is, um, you know, a lot when you're working with these uh, sound design texture stuff, it's a really good idea just to record this as audio into a new track. Because, you know, you might just want to capture just the tail of that uh, vocal delay rising in pitch. That'd be kind of a cool maybe transition effect, whatnot. You know, just converting it to audio sometimes is easy, especially it allows you to resample it back into maybe another uh, granular synthesizer or just a sampler and then work with it in sort of a, in a different way. Now let's put some more things through the uh, granular synthesizer. So now what I've done is I've taken this sample from the Spectral Textures Pack on Ableton this you know sort of pad sound I've thrown that into granulator 2 same settings you know with the grain delay and it sounds pretty cool when you have it pitched down an octave so that's what I'm gonna play actually wait, there we go then you just move it around So you got this like sort of airy, I don't even know what you would describe it, some sort of pad. <laughs> Here's without the grain delay. You know, it's got all these uh, almost little tiny transient elements that add a nice stereo effect. the pitch and maybe we can make this decrease now and then you know just kind of scan across I like when it releases and the pitch just slowly falls off, kind of like a, uh, it's like tape delay, you know? So the second method involves this plugin called Hysteresis, which I've 
mentioned in my top five free plugins video. This thing is great. And I believe it also uses granular synthesis to do whatever the hell it's doing. So here I just have simple cowbell sound. Honestly, you can put literally whatever as the input because it, it sounds the same <laughs> once you start messing with it. So, so right now it's just typical delay. Now you just wanna start twisting knobs. So let's just, you know, put all these to the max. You want this feedback up pretty high. So what I would suggest is that you just put dry wet on 100 or you can, you know, group this into a thing and just record the output from hysteresis and just chop up whatever you like. So, you know, you could just do dry chain and then just call this hiss and then on here you can set the external in to a kick and just set it to hysteresis uh, post effects. So now it's just recording that. So you can you know, go in here, start messing with a bunch of knobs. We want everything on max. And then what you could do is say, you know, you like one of those things. You could also, yeah, you chop it up and might as well put grain delay on it again. So, you know, with these um, sort of granular stuff, you just get those, like, those buzzing around your head kind of sounds, which is really cool to put in the background, um, sometimes even drowned out with some reverb. So, put some reverb on here. Another method for doing this is using Foley sound. So Foley is, you know, what they use for like sound effects. So it can really be anything. Usually it's a lot of real life recording, stuff like that. So I have here a paper crumbling sound effect. And, you know, it's really nice to use these sort of organic homemade little effects you can do. I mean, I've done it on my own mic here. Yeah, just crumple some paper or just rub some random stuff. Like I'll literally just pick up something from my desk and make some random noise with it and record it. And it's cool to put in the background, especially when you time stretch it and do stuff like that. So here's the original sample. And if you time stretch it with this beats algorithm, you start getting these sort of kind of glitchy effects and then you can time stretch it more. You know, the other algorithms just, they don't really sound as cool, at least to me. But I, I really do like the beats. And this is one of those things that, you know, you can put, again, put granular, uh, or do granular synthesis on, or put a grain delay. Uh, reverb definitely helps when you do these things. 
or putting it into a sampler. So I can do that, just put it into here and then play it. So you can even just And then if you put grain delay, Kind of similar textures to the hysteresis stuff, but just a slightly different feel. It's not as aggressive. And then you know you can add reverb, of course. Let's try putting this into a granular synthesizer. So let's put granulator to take this. I'm gonna, yeah, I'll just place it like that. That's loud. Yeah, I don't think this works as well when you have it with the beats. So let me just put in the untime warped sample. Yep. So again, you can get these sort of, you know, weird textury effects. And, if, you know, it helps to have uh, the delay. All right, so the last two things I'll leave you with is if you are an Ableton user, try to go download this glitch and wash pack. It's on the Ableton website for free if you have Ableton Suite, but it's got a, a lot of nice uh, little effects and one shots like these little glitch effects. And what I do is I just load a bunch of these into a drum rack and then I can just kind of pick which ones I want to use where. But if you really, really like the glitch and FM perk type sounds, I highly recommend you get the Electribe ER1, this bad boy over here, which I've made a bunch of videos about. Actually, my last video was going over some of its like basic features, and I'll put some links in the description below so you can see some of that. But yeah, no, that thing is amazing. It's like 100, 150 bucks. Amazing, especially if you don't want to spend like a grand on a modular synth and you like those um, metallic FM perks and weird sort of bleep bloop <laughs> glitch sounds. Amazing machine. And I, the thing is, I can't recreate that in the box. Like, it's just, it would be too much of a pain in the butt. And it still wouldn't sound nowhere as good as that thing. Just because it has physical knobs that you can just immediately just switch, you know, an LFO waveform or uh, mess with the delay and all that. So yeah, that thing is amazing. They have some other ones that are like above it, like the EMX. You can get that for like 300, 350 bucks. That's pretty much an ER1 on crack. And um, yeah, they also have like an EA1, which I don't have much experience using, but I do do want to get that. The ER1 is actually, I'd say, the most important piece of gear in my setup just because I can't uh, recreate in the box. Like the Moog, the Model D, 303, all those I can to an extent, get pretty much the same sound in the box. You know, it's not as fun, maybe not as creative, but I can still get the sound. The ER one's definitely not like that. And I've used it on a bunch of tracks just for like, you know, background effects, bleep loops, all that sort of good stuff. So yeah, ER one, highly recommend. So there you have it guys. I appreciate you for staying this far into the video. As I learn more methods for creating these type of sounds, I will upload more videos on this topic because, you know, it doesn't get the love that it deserves. You know, we need to put more love into the effects and the ambience. But as always, I hope you have a great day. Stay creative and 
Peace out.